Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to make an image move along a path inside of DaVinci Resolve 17. So we want to create a custom fusion composition from a blank clip. So in the effects library, we can go down to toolbox effects and then grab fusion composition and position this on our timeline. So if you want this path movement to sit on top of an already existing video clip, we can put it on video track two instead, sitting above video track one where the base video is. Otherwise, it doesn't really matter what track you put it on since there's nothing underneath. So I'm going to just leave it in video track one and we're going to go over to the fusion page. So before we create the path for a bicycle to move across, I'm going to go ahead and bring in a background. So this little JPEG image I got, I'll just bring this in here as a media one. So this is basically just going to be background. We do want to resize it to the frame of our video, though. So I'm going to right click on the node graph, add tool, go down to transform, resize, and let's connect it in here. We can see that the width and height is already set to match the video project sizes. So I'm just going to connect media one into here, and then we're going to need a merge node so that any other images we bring into this fusion composition can combine with the background for the final output. So I'm going to right click, go to add tool, composite, merge, and let's connect resize one to be the background or the yellow connector on the merge node. Then we can take this and feed it to media out. So I'm going to connect the gray output to media out. And then we have our background on the right. Note that the size is resized to be 1920 by 1080 pixels. Now on the left over here, we're going to need the image that we want to move on the path. So I am going to just drag this bicycle image down here. Next, we're going to need a transform node to come after this media in. And the transform node is going to be where we take a path and we use that to adjust the position of our media into image, the bicycle. So I'm going to right click and do add tool, go down to transform, transform. Now we need to connect media in two to this transform. I'll just go ahead and quickly rename media in two to be bicycle image. And now transform one goes to merge one. So we have our little bicycle here and the background, but we don't want its position to start there. We want its position to start over here on the left. So in order to modify the position of the bike with a path, we need to add a path to the center value, the center X and center Y for the transform. So I'm going to right click on this and select path. So right now we're in insert and modify mode and you might notice that there's actually a point we can select right here that's been automatically created at the center of our transform. So if we bring this down to the bottom left hand corner, let's say let's put it there. So this is now going to be the bottom of our path. Let's add a few more points in. So I'm going to click append and now we can control the other points for our path by left clicking on the node graph. Now, if you want to curve them, you can left click and then hold and you can actually adjust these curve handles by pulling around on the screen. After you let go, you can still click on these curve handles and adjust them to get the right shape you need. And then left click on your future points. If you want to, you can adjust the curves even after you let go. If you want to adjust the curves, even if you didn't set them initially, just left click on the point that you want to modify and then pull these curves around. And you can just keep going until we get roughly our final shape. So what we might notice if we go through the timeline is that although the bike is positioned on the path that we've created, it doesn't actually move across time. So if we open up the keyframes window in the top right, we can adjust this property called displacement for the path one. So the displacement is going to, in a sense, be the location along the path that we happen to be from zero at the start over here to one right up here at the end. So let's expand this keyframe editor a little bit more. So in order to animate the property for our bike moving across the screen for the duration of this little animation, let's open the spline editor. And there's gonna be a property in here called displacement. So we want to check that, which is gonna allow us to start editing the value of how far along the path our object being modified by the transform should be. So if we go to frame zero, either in the spline editor or the graph down here, let's make sure we're at frame zero. You can also type it in here. I'll just manually type zero. We can see that there's a locked keyframe here. So we'll need to set another keyframe before we can modify that. Let's go to 
frame 149 right here at the end of the animation. And I'm going to left click on the graph at that displacement point of one. Now we can go to the start. I'm going to select this point and I'm going to hit delete on it. So if we zoom out, now we have one keyframe determining the displacement at frame 140. So now at frame zero, let's add a point on the line, left click, and then pull this all the way down to zero. So this is going to cause a animation for the duration of our fusion composition. So I'm going to go to frame zero, hit play. And here we have our bicycle moving along the screen. Now, of course, it's rendering a little slow since we're still in the fusion editor. When you actually render your project, it should be faster. If you want the displacement animation to end sooner or you want to add more points, you can click on the graph at various times. Time is measured in frames from left to right, but we can also adjust the timing of other keyframes if we want the animation to end faster rather than at the end of our fusion composition, we could have it be 30 or 60 frames shorter by pulling this square to the left. So let's say that when the bicycle is going up the hill that we actually want it to rotate around to kind of simulate the idea of going up at a slope. So how we can do that is by adjusting this angle property according to the heading of the path. So the direction that the path is heading in, basically if it's going up, is going to end up rotating the angle based on whatever direction the path is going. So if we right click on the angle, we can do connect to path one, which is already created with the center property. And then we connect that to heading. So now if we hit play, whatever direction the path is going between points is going to affect the direction that this little bicycle is facing. So this ends up making it look a lot better there. Of course, we can see that because I didn't curve any of the points, when we get around here where it's changing from one direction to the other, the change is quite sudden. One way we could kind of adjust that is to go back to insert and modify mode, left click on a point, hit shift A to select all the points. And then we can go over here to the smooth modifier. So I'm going to hit smooth and that's going to add a minor curve to all of the points. So now if we go to frame zero and hit play, it's going to smooth out that little transition between each of the points and the bike will be able to move smoother across the screen. Now there's one last thing, which is that the transform is modifying the position of the bicycle, but the bicycle image is centered on that transform point where we actually want it to be. Uh, the transform point is more at the very bottom of the bicycle where the wheel would touch the ground. So to get around that, I'm going to add a extra transform between bicycle image and transform over here. I'll close the spline editor. We don't need that anymore. So having bicycle image selected or media into whatever you have it called right now, I'm going to right click on the line in front of it, go to add tool, transform and then transform. So with this second transform, I'm just going to take the center X and move it upwards until the bicycle is offset nicely so that the wheels look more like it's actually touching the ground. So if we go to frame zero and hit play, our little bicycle is going to be moving across the path from left to right. And that is roughly going to give us the result we'd be looking for on how to make a image animated with a path inside of DaVinci Resolve 17. So that's going to be it for this video. I've been Chris. Thanks for watching and hopefully I'll see all of you in my future video content.